Like, I, it's almost amazing to me that I'm the guy that was with Aaliyah. Do you think you would have married her one day? Yeah. As you hear all this other stuff in the news with R. Kelly, how, do you, how does that make you feel about him? We talked about it up to the point where it hurt. And then she said, I don't want to talk about it no more. First of all, this has to be a hard time, this anniversary coming up of Aaliyah's passing. What goes through your mind? Well, it's amazing that it's been so long, but it still feels like yesterday. Like literally, you know, I was reflecting today. There hasn't been one day since she's passed, not one. In the 20 years that I haven't either heard her name, heard a record, or seen a picture of her, every single day she's present in my life, and I feel lucky for that. What did we lose by losing her? Where would she be today? It's where the world would be today. Right. The trajectory of the world would have been a lot different had she been on this planet, you know, because she was an opinion leader. She was one of those people that if she did something first, everyone followed suit. Yeah. So, yeah, she was just building herself as a brand, mm -hmm. you know? So... Again, the trajectory of the world would have been a lot different because she was a very forward thinker. Do you think you would have married her one day? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, the plan was because we were both so busy. So while she was shooting um, the movie in Australia, I was shooting paid in full. So I couldn't fly to Australia to go see her. She was gone for four months. And when she came back, you know, she had to be in LA to rehearse for a video while I had to do whatever I was doing. I had companies to run. So we would have such a good time when we saw each other, you know, it was like, it, it just always felt fresh. So our thing was, you know, let's see if we can like tolerate being each around each other with no distractions for six months. If we still have this same feeling, then we'll get married. But our intention at first wasn't even to be in love. We were just really good friends and it, we fell for real. It was almost an accident. But what I learned from that, number one, I didn't know what being in love was. I didn't even understand what that feeling is. And I was able to really achieve that with her. So now I know what it feels like. So I was able to identify it when it happened again, you know? And after she passed, it changed my whole life because I would only do what I love. I would only be around people I love. That became the only currency I cared about is how I felt. But everyone here is either gonna lose someone they love or they're gonna be a loss to someone they love. We're doomed the day we're born. So in between that time, we have to enjoy life and marinate the things that really count but I never thought about what it would feel like to lose my girl. You didn't want her to go, did you? No. So she was shooting a video mm -hmm. in Miami. Yep. And I had my son and my nephews with me. And, you know, she was very supportive. She particularly liked Freeway, his voice. And she was supportive of anything I was doing. She was like, yo, while I'm in Miami, I had the state property down there, mm -hmm. uh, which yep. was a group. Yeah. And yeah she was gonna do a record with Freeway. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna come down there, I'll check you, I'll bring the kids, make a vacation, work, the whole night. So when we got there, you know, Hype was making this video and I was like, I know Hype. I just got off of uh, Big Pimpin' where I had to cut the video, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. he likes yep. to spend bread. So I was like, you know he's gonna make you do another day, don't do it. Trust me, it's just so, so he can spend money, you know? And uh, sure enough, she came home that day and I had a big house, I rented this house, and she's like, I'm going to, you know, there. And I was like, I just thought that it was, uh, it wasn't necessary. You know, I knew that that was gonna happen. And then, when she actually was, uh, saw the plane, she, um, you know, we had the Blackberries, and she said, I don't like this plane. And I was like, well, don't get on it. And she was like, well, I got to because I got work to do. She got on the plane, and she always had a very serious fear of planes in general. Mm -hmm. So she had to overcome a fear to get on that plane on the way there. Um, but what I was really more tight about was that I had heard that Lenny Kravitz had offered her a jet and that Hype had took the jet. So that's what really pissed me off about the situation when I heard about that. So you could ask Hype about that. That's what I said. Have you, ever, have you ever talked to Hype about it? Fuck yeah. And how did that conversation go? Ask him. But I also am asking you. Yeah, but ask him. I feel like you had some things to say to him. Because of my respect for Aaliyah and her family, her music is like, it's just coming out, but everyone's very respectful of her memory. No one really speaks on it, because mm -hmm. that's the circle of people she had around. So out of respect for her memory, I don't say a lot of things. Tell me about that day. Where were you? I was getting my hair cut. 
and I was waiting for her. So, you know, she was trying to get back really quickly because we were trying to see each other. So she was like, I'm gonna get on the first thing smoking. And that day I was, I waited in the house and I was getting a haircut. And when they told me that there was a crash, it was her mom that told me and they said they didn't find all the bodies yet. So they didn't know she was still alive. But for me, I was like, so it's a wrap. So I hadn't finished my haircut and I took all of her clothes out of my house and everything. And I went to go see her mom because I just didn't want to be triggered. I was not embarrassed to cry about losing Aaliyah, and I'm still not. Mm -hmm. But I cried hard in front of people that thought I was weak. I mean, I still had to get myself together and fight because there were things that were going on. We actually have video of you. You're very, at her funeral, where you're very emotional. Yeah, I told you. you remember I that day? Remember that day? I don't revisit it often because it hurts. So it's not like I visualize it, you know, so much. I see pictures sometimes. But a lot was going on in that moment. There's a report that to get on that plane, she may have taken something. There's a new report out. Yeah, I read it. What did you think about that? I didn't really think about it. You know, it's like, what am I gonna do? What difference does it make at this point? You also said that her death and then your mother's death shortly after, yeah. it changed you, it turned you into a monster. Yeah, it made me fearless because I know what real pain feels like and I've dealt with it. Can't be nothing worse than that. There's a couple of things that are a little worse than that, but, or up there. But overall, if it ain't that, then I'm not really concerned. And you know, death can't be so bad because you're gonna be with the people you love so it makes you not fear it. So there's no fear. It made me fearless. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not scared of anything. You talked about the music coming out now, finally. Mm -hmm. the, it took a minute and the estate wasn't happy about this. Do, does the estate want that music out? I don't know. Do you think it should have been out a while ago? I'm a fan. Of course. And do you, you feel like you're ready for that rush of Aaliyah that will come out where people will be playing the music so much more? You know, there was a time when she first passed, a lot of what I did to escape was I went out every night. And mm -hmm. what everyone knew in New York was when I walked into a club, do not play any Aaliyah but it just took me a minute, it was a process. I couldn't even look at her movies or anything for a while. But now, you know, you never heal, but you learn to live with. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now I, I, I embrace hearing her music because there's signs to me. It means she's mm -hmm. talking to me. It still messes with you, doesn't it? No, nah. nah. it doesn't mess with me. I mean, her, it messes with me that she's not here, but I have no regrets about the way I, you know, approach things because that's the way you're supposed to approach things. I did what I was supposed to do. I could have never known anything like that would have happened. Yeah. In hindsight, had I known that, then yes, I would have actually broke boundaries and definitely did things to make sure she was safe. But I could have never imagined that that type of could have happened. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But she was just, she was the coolest. The only person I know as cool as her are, 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 is Rocky and my daughters. But she was definitely different. And she didn't want to deal with the bullshit. Like the things that had happened in the past, she told me, leave it alone. I was going to ask you about that. because I, I figured a, you were. The, it's back in the news again. You said that um, after hearing some of the stuff about R. Kelly, you would need therapy. What did you mean by that? When you hear about things and you can't do anything about it, you have to internalize. Mm -hmm. So I have to figure out how to release it so it doesn't turn into cancer in my body. That's what I meant. Now that we have been told things, that they were indeed married, that he, he, it feared. I knew all that. Did y'all ever talk about it? Lightly. We talked about it up to the point where it hurt. And then she said, I don't want to talk about it no more. Leave it alone. And when she would, I kind of didn't want to know because her, I would have to respect her wish no matter what. And she, her wish was, leave it alone, let me heal, let me rest, let me, I'm in love, let's just enjoy this. She had moved past it. Yeah, 100%. And I had helped her. Mm -hmm. As you hear all this other stuff in the news with R. Kelly, how, do you, how does that make you feel about him? I don't wanna say. 
I think there were all things for all of us that there were things that kind of surprised and shocked us. Then we were kind of like, hmm. I was just shocked at how long he got away with it and how many people turned and looked the other way. How many people were still, you know, involved with him in any kind of way, knowing all those things. What's your one memory of Aaliyah? What's the memory when you think of her? What is the memory that you think of? A moment, a conversation, a, a trip? A... No. Well, we took this one trip to Nevis off season mm -hmm. and no one was there but the monkeys. I got the pictures and it was just us on an island for like a couple of days and we really felt like we didn't need anybody but us. It didn't matter about fame. It didn't matter about money. The wealth was our love and no one was watching. Like I, it's almost amazing to me that I'm the guy that was with Aaliyah. Hmm. Like I'm almost a fan of myself. Like who is that guy? Who could it be that cool to be with Aaliyah? Like who could have actually been with Aaliyah? It's me. And that's crazy. So I gotta appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Every year the legend grows and you are you were part of that legend. What do you think that people should remember about her? What is the thing? What is the I mean what she presented legend? to them? Great music and swag, the coolest. You know?